are too many 4K webcams to pick from, and they all brag about the same things. I'm losing my mind. And clearly you guys are as well, because my comment section is flooded with requests to cover different <laughs> webcams every day. You guys tell me you're too nervous to spend your money because you don't want to waste it on the wrong thing. But have no fear, today we are taking out two current champions, the best 4K webcams you guys picked out, and comparing them to our new challenger, the Insta360 Link 2, in another episode of Best 4K Webcam on a Budget! And spoilers, this might be one of the best and most versatile pieces of gear I have ever tested on the channel. I am in love and I think you will be as well. But I don't want you to trust my word as usual. I want you to feel confident in your decision. So the first thing we are doing today are blind video samples. The challenge for you is to, as always, pick which of these three cameras you like the look of best. The Insta360 Link 2, the OBS Bot Meet 2 4K, or the YOLO Cam S3 4K. I've set my lights to all the same brightness and temperature. I've matched their white balance, set the webcam's lowest f-stop, and then exposed them at the lowest ISO I could. No effects, no filters, just the base webcam. Stick around at the end of the video for the reveal of which is which and comment your favorite below. Now, let's talk about the Insta360 Link 2 because compared to every other webcam I've covered on this channel, it is incredibly unique. Both because of something I'll be covering later in the video, but also because this is the only webcam that has given me an image quality good enough to comfortably use alongside my $5,000 mirrorless camera setup, which I will be doing throughout this video as a secondary comparison. Now, straight away, it meets my most crucial criteria of being an f1.8 lens, but that's not unique because all three of the webcams are f1.8 today. That low f-stop, as always, means two things. First, it has a better depth, adding a slight blur behind me, but more importantly, they also let far more light in, meaning you need less powerful lights to expose the image and won't need to digitally raise the ISO, aka ruining the image. Remember, the goal is always to keep that ISO low. That said, the light sensitivity of this little webcam right here is actually quite unique because when I tested it in a dimly lit environment, I had an ISO of 400 compared to the OBS bot, which needed double that at 800. I want to show you how it performs in complete darkness as well in a second, but just quickly, let's take a look at the skin in both of these images. The OBS bot has quite a lot of red tones to it. It's quite saturated and colored, which means I look very red in the face, which I always do, but it really comes up in this webcam. However, you compare that to the Insta360, which the only way to describe this image, I would say, is to be color accurate. In fact, it's the most color accurate webcam I have ever used. When I set my white balance to match my lighting at 4700 Kelvin on all three of these cameras, the Insta360 Link 2 is the only one that reproduces accurate skin tones and colors. But how does it do if we turn off every key light in my office? Well, let's throw all our cameras up again. And as we slowly raise the ISO, we find that the OBS bot needed 4500 ISO in order to be usable. The Yellow Cam S3 required 2500 ISO and the Insta360 Link 2 in an utterly amazing showing only needed 1600 ISO. If we zoom in as well, you can obviously see there is digital noise from raising the ISO in both the OBS bot and the Insta360, with it being slightly more noticeable in the Insta360, I think, but that's not a bad thing. You see, in this case, it's more noticeable on the Insta360 because the Insta360 is far sharper. I mean, look at that image, which leads me into, of course, the most important part of a 4K camera, crispy, crunchy, sharp image quality. Oh, I love it. Normally when we test sharpness, we put the cameras out really wide and they all look really similar and we end up having to zoom in to really tell which one's better. But to me, looking at the raw footage on my PC, the Insta360 is so much sharper and so much cleaner than the OBS bot and the YOLO Cam S3. And then if we do pixel peep and zoom right into my eyes and face, you can just see this beautiful detail in the skin. Look at the iris. Look, oh, just the beard. I love it. But if we show the YOLO Cam S3, here, you will notice it appears far sharper than the Insta360. But as I said in my review of that webcam, the sharpness feels almost unnatural, like it's been digitally turned up to 100%. It does feel like they did that with the saturation and contrast as well, whereas the Insta360 has a much more natural, clean sharpness, much like how it has a much more natural look. I really like the sharpness of this camera. The depth and autofocus on this Insta360 is also surreal. It has a 10 centimeter focus distance, which means I can get 10 centimeters from the camera, sort of, maybe, before it stops being able to focus on me. Obviously, the lens is incredibly wide, as all webcam lenses are incredibly wide angles, 
so you'll never achieve true depth of field, much like I can with this mirrorless camera over here. That said, the autofocus on this camera is actually a little bit scary how confident it is. Look at this side-by-side -side comparison of the YOLO cam and watch as it struggles and panics while trying to focus me in this shot compared to the Insta360, which is locked in and confident. And just watch this for me for a second. And I'm in focus. Wait for it. Did you just see how long it took Sony to focus? I know it is wide angle, so autofocusing being fast is quite easy for it, but it's still crazy how quick it is and how solid it is. Now already, it's pretty clear how great this webcam is, and it shouldn't really surprise anyone because Insta360 are a camera brand. This is what they've done for years. But this tiny little device is so much more than just a webcam. No, this is also a two axis automatic gimbal. What does that mean? Well, it means that I can move over here and the camera will actually move and track me around the room manually and physically. Now, automatic tracking and reframing has become incredibly common in recent years. As we know, the OBS bot can also do something similar to that. However, the OBS bot is digital reframing to follow you around your room. And digital reframing has major problems. First, digital reframing means they have to also digitally zoom in, which lowers your image quality. And second, the webcam isn't actually moving and rotating, just cropped in and then moving around this image to follow you. So it's quite limited. As you can see, if I move off to the side, eventually the OBS bot has to give up. It just can't follow me. However, the Insta360 Link 2, being on that two axis gimbal that has a full rotation nearly of 360 degrees, it can literally follow me around my entire room. It's a physical movement from the camera so that you don't lose quality, unless of course you choose to zoom. Let me just show you how accurate the physical tracking is. I'm gonna switch to head so it's just zoomed in just on my face, and then I'm just gonna do this. I can hear you saying, yeah, that's a cool feature, but why would I even need a gimbal on my webcam? And honestly, I'm glad you asked. First, for me, the gimbal and the movement gave me the ability to have a hand or desk camera in seconds without having to set one entirely up. I could just turn this into my hand cam and into my desk cam, which is amazing because I love sharing my sketching and my art that I do. And I know heaps of my friends who are Warhammer nerds or crafting streamers would love the flexibility of clicking one button and having the gimbal go and just show off their art. Or let's say you're a woodworking, cooking or personal trainer creator. This can track you around those large dynamic spaces, which now that I say that, I realize my office isn't the best place to show this camera off. So let's go to one of the best and worst places to show it off, my dark garage. I've plugged this directly into my MacBook, which just kidding, this shot is actually my MacBook. And now this is the link too. I love woodworking. Specifically, I like to reclaim old wooden pallets, clean them up and then make equipment for kids to use. I also love filming the process for later as it really helps me show what I'm making for other people. But of course, woodworking, you move around a lot. You need a lot of room to do that. And my garage is pretty much pitch black. So I kind of gave up on recording the process until now. Just look at the range of motion and quality I have in this footage. This is just plugged in without any changes. It's all automatic, no professional lighting or care is put into this and it would be completely usable. Another great option, I've always wanted to do an exercise charity stream, but logistically couldn't find a way to do that without asking someone to literally record the entire thing for me. But here we are in my gym and it just tracks me around the room perfectly. Even if I told it to zoom in and track just my face specifically, and then without warning decided to sprint to the other side of the room just to try troll it, it's just, wow. And it even has a group tracking setting. So if there are a few different people involved in the content, it'll track the group rather than just the individuals. Now I don't have any friends, so I can't test this, but I have heard it works great. And apparently so does the Wave speakerphone attachment, which uses microphones on the speakerphone to listen to the room and then have the camera turn towards voices in the room and show who is speaking, which sounds incredibly cool for podcasters or conference calls, but it's not really something me as a streamer, specifically a solo streamer, can test. One of the things that's really cool about this is you can actually tell the camera to do different things using hand signals. As you can see right now, I am tracking myself. The camera will follow me around. However, I'll tell it I want it to stop tracking. And it stopped. And I want it to start again. And it started again. Or maybe I can't get to my PC, but I do want it to zoom in a little bit. Well, I hold this up and then I move my hand 
and it starts to zoom in for me. And these gesture controls are really easy to use, but let's pretend they're actually really difficult and you don't like using them. Or maybe your hands are full. Let's say I want to adjust the shot while I'm on my treadmill. All I have to do is use my phone to scan the QR code on my PC where I control the webcam and my phone will pop open a browser to control the entire camera. I'm talking every exposure setting, every color setting. And of course, I can also completely change the gimbal, location, zoom, everything. Personally, I ended up actually preferring to control most of the camera from my phone because I found the touchscreen to be really intuitive when I wanted the camera to look certain directions. Which of course, as I've said, it does have normal software for your PC, which is clean and easy to use. It has all the normal things you can expect, such as full manual color and exposure control. But it also has this lovely exposure curve feature, which I really like because it just lets you give subtle boosts to specific sections of light, such as my mids. It has a vertical or portrait setting for say TikTok, shorts or vertical streaming, or if you just want a slimmer webcam on a larger image. I also really like the preset tool. Essentially, you can set presets. You make all these adjustments to the position, the zoom and everything like that. Take your time to do it, make sure it's perfect and then save it as a preset. And when you are recording or live, you just do one click to reposition the entire shot to that preset you saved rather than having to fiddle with it all while you're live. With all that said, I think it is time for us to reveal the blind tests and of course, how much these cameras cost. Starting with blind A, which seems pretty obvious now, it's clearly the OBS bot. You can tell because it is softer than the other images and a little bit too red in the skin tones. Followed by YOLOCAM S3 being blind B, which again, seems very obvious now by how sharp it was, how contrasty it was, and how saturated it was. It stands out because even though the image quality on it feels good, it has been pushed incredibly hard. And finally, blind C is the Insta360 Link 2. It is incredibly color accurate. It looks incredibly sharp, but not unnatural. But were your guesses correct? And which one did you actually prefer? Did you comment below? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And with all that done, let's reveal the prices. Coming in at the cheapest of the three options, the OBS Bot Meet 2 4K is sitting at around 140 USD right now, followed by the Insta360 Link 2, which is 200 USD. And finally, the YOLOCAM S3, which is 220 USD right now. However, I will say it's important to mention the Insta360 Link 2 is currently on sale for 150 USD. And personally, I think the quality it provides is worth far more than it actually costs. They could charge a lot more for this camera in my mind, which is fantastic because we actually asked Insta360 to support you guys this holiday season. And they said anyone who uses my link and affiliate code in the description will get another $50 off. And if you love the image quality, but you don't see yourself needing a full gimbal, you can check out the Insta360 Link 2C, which is only $100, which is nuts. You imagine getting this camera for like 100 USD. I'm going to go pretend to be a goblin and run around my garage naked in the dark and have a camera follow me around. Don't ask, but I'll see you guys next week. Wow!